A 2022 Eastmont School construction bond aimed to fix a lot. Four aging elementary schools and Sterling Junior High would be renovated. Athletic facilities would be updated. They'd have a new transportation center. The $185 million bond went on to fail during the November election that year as it was unable to meet the 60% supermajority threshold needed to pass. Only 50% of voters approved the measure. After the bond failure, the Eastmont School Board regrouped and asked the community what they wanted. On February 13th, they're trying again, this time with a smaller project list that costs $67 million less. We've enjoyed a rich legacy in Eastmont of voter support um, and just an all around um, support of our kids. So I think that showed in the last bond, we just didn't get the heavy lift to 60%. Um, when we asked voters why they voted the way they do, did and do they have any input for us, most of them said the scope of the bond was too broad and the price tag was too high. The four kind of anchor schools are still the four anchor schools in this upcoming bond. They're our oldest schools, so they are Rock Island, Cascade, Kenroy, and Lee. Um, so we'll totally modernize the th three, and then Rock Island will do some major upgrades. Uh, in the last bond, we also had a new transportation center. We had athletic upgrades. We had additions to Sterling Junior High. Um, we had safety upgrades, but the safety upgrades remain in this new bond. Over 900 people participated in an online thought exchange, which helped the district better understand what the top priorities were for voters. It was determined that Cascade, Kenroy, and Lee schools were the most in need of rebuilding, and Rock Island also needed work done. Participants agreed the athletics facilities needed upgrades, but not through increasing taxes. The transportation center was also deemed a nice to have and not an immediate need. Still, the district was able to make some improvements. We did really when the bond didn't pass is we asked the community for input and we took very close um, inventory of our facilities and decided what really can't wait. Um, if it's student safety, it couldn't wait, not in general, but um, if we have a buckling floor or something that kids are tripping over, something like that, we had to fix those. So um, since there were no athletics during COVID, we had um, a few hundred thousand dollars left in athletics reserve that we were able to resurface the track with. The track really needed it. Kids were um, getting hurt, twisting body parts and ankles and things. So we're happy about that. And then the board decided to take a little bit out of reserve. Um, every district needs a rainy day fund. We, we have to have a few months of payroll. We have to have a few months of everything. Uh, it would be irresponsible to the taxpayer not to, but the board decided to take a little chunk of that out to buy the lights at the high school. Um, and then we are addressing the needs of Eastmont Junior High's gym floor that has buckled with water. Should this bond pass, the tax rate is projected to remain the same as in 2023. The district paid off a capital levy in 2023 and the new bond would replace that tax in 2025. The 2023 combined tax rate was $2.92 per thousand of assessed property value. There is a chance that this rate can decrease as new construction and houses are built and especially as Microsoft begins to move into the area. This bond also generates an additional 20 million in state matching funds. It's uh, quite a formula, but there are experts from the state who have helped us as well as our own consultants. And they gauge um, the age of the building, the efficiency of the building when it was last remodeled. So it's a very time sensitive formula. Uh, if we were to wait on this bond, we would not be able to get 20 million. It might be more like 5 million. Um, and so that's part of the staging of the projects. That's part of the calculus of running the bond now. I hope that the community feels like we've responded to their needs and their wants and they are the, they're the um, kind of custodians of this asset. Uh, these are their buildings um, and so we need to reflect their values. In an attempt to learn more about the building conditions that would be addressed by the bond, NCW Life was granted access to all four schools over a several hour period on January 16th. As we were given tours of each school, we learned more about how the buildings are posing challenges to the students and staff inside. During filming, a bitter cold was freezing North Central Washington. That week, it was too cold for Eastmont students to go outside for recess. For kids at Cascade and Kenroy schools, they need to go outside anyway if they were going to the library or cafeteria. Both schools were built in a series of buildings and every classroom has an exterior door that leads to their breezeways. 
My classroom is currently at 58 degrees, which is too cold for students. And so when we're getting lined up to go to specialists and everything, you think of that exterior door that has to be opened up to the four degree weather outside. And that's just making it even colder. Um, the kids are cold in class right now. And so we're bundled up and wearing our coats all day, but um, it'd be nice to be in a building where when it does get cold, um, the system can keep up and keep our kids warm. And then the same thing happens uh, in the spring. It gets very uh, hot in our classrooms. And again, that causes a challenge for learning and teaching. Classroom doors remain locked at all times. When students are coming and going throughout the day, it becomes a disruption to the class with a lot of up and down happening to let them back in. There are several doors in each class and the teachers described their uneasy feeling knowing there are so many entrances to the classrooms. We have lots of doors. So I have one, two, three, four doors just in my classroom. And so um, to me, that's more of a safety thing. We have two glass doors um, that are exterior doors and then our hallway door is also a glass door. So when we do drills or anything of that nature, we need to make sure all of them are locked up. And then we have to basically try to get out of the path of a glass door. So in, with recent times, you think about safety and where would we put the kids and how would we actually do it? Um, because when it was built, we didn't have to think about things like that. If someone were to get in one door, they have access to the entire pod. So uh, when we do drills and things, we've had staff meeting after staff meeting trying to problem solve um, to keep kids safe if it were real, what would we do? Um, but all of the doors, if one is unlocked, then they gain access to the entire pod, which is unnerving. Additional challenges to the outdoor hallways include the uneven walkway, which poses extra challenges for students with physical disabilities. Two years ago, I had uh, two kids in wheelchairs. And when you think about just going to PE or to library or to lunch, they would go out and it was really challenging to get the wheelchairs over um, any of it on a regular day. But then when it snowed, it was would delay all of the time, at least five minutes for every single transition throughout the day. So that's a huge challenge for kiddos that have wheelchairs or crutches or anything, whether it's temporary or permanent. Cascade principal Trevor Summers, who gave us a tour around the building, told us about how a student in a wheelchair was injured due to the conditions of the pavement. Like we had huge cracks in between the cement and the asphalt here where they actually their, their wheels got stuck and we had one, one student fall and get injured. And so maintenance does a great job, they, they patch it, but it's just, it's just putting a band-aid on the problem. You know, the, the facilities are in an age where it's really hard to keep up and maintain it to make sure it's safe for all of our kids. Cascade students and teachers utilize the whole school, and that often means making makeshift instructional spaces out of anywhere they can. We have to create like small group work in like essentially hallways. So this table and every pot has this. This is where our kids get a lot of their special education services. And you can see the lighting's not great and the, the space isn't great. It's not conducive for learning. And yet this is where we're having kids get extra support. And this is just the best that we can offer just because of the way that the building's made up. And we don't have any extra space. There's no open classrooms. There's no, there's no additional areas that aren't being utilized by staff and students all the time. Inside the staff room, Summers took us to the small corner that is designated as the nurse's station. This is where we're trying to get our nurse some privacy to make phone calls, <laughs> which you can see it's is pretty rudimentary as far as offering a nice workspace for, you know, a nurse that's super vital to our kids and families. Summers also took us through the gymnasium, the floor of which he said basketballs hardly bounce on, to another intervention room that is inside the gym. For her to, to work with our kids, she has to go and get them and often walk them all the way through, walk them through a gym <laughs> to bring them in here to work with them, to give them extra support and then walk them back which again, not the most efficient or productive way to do things. So you might think, well, it's, what is it, a, a minute or two to walk, but when you do two minutes each way, you know, four minutes every day, that's 20 minutes a week times 180 days, it adds up. You know, we're, we're looking at significant loss of learning just because we have to walk to go get students to bring them in because we don't have facilities to, to properly house them. Between Cascade, Kenroy, and Lee, hundreds of students are taught inside portables due to the lack of space inside their building. Portables, meant to be a temporary solution, have become permanent fixtures at the schools. 
The oldest portables are on Lee's campus and were built in 1989 according to Eastmont's facilities dashboard, making them 35 years old. Douglas Cornwell, a Lee teacher, said they house all the fifth and sixth grade classrooms. They're, they're fine for what they are, but again, they're supposed to be temporary and these have kind of become permanent for quite a while. Uh, issues that we have with them, uh, the pipes freeze fairly easily. Uh, the HVAC units, again, like they, they have a hard time, uh, you know, so we have to watch these. A lot of our, um, our uh, I, I was gonna say what you call them, like a deck, you know, what, the steps that go up to there, they're mostly ramps and we've got a few steps, but you know, they're slowly, you know, falling apart and things are there. We got rust around the doors. So with the new, um, with the new bond plan, I know that they were looking to get rid of our portables and you know, how these be full-time brick and mortar classrooms. You know, so, I mean, they, they are what they are and they, and they house kids and they do a good job, but they're past their prime. Like to, to get into the building, we have to go through here, which again is another big safety issue, is having to walk, you know, from the building into here, because then we have to, because we have locked doors, you have to somehow get a key pass, you know, to someone who gets in, you know, and then if that disappears, we have to, you know, reset our, our security thing. So another thing is just keeping kids safe is, you know, spending like less time out in the, like these breezeways and that, you know, and also we're wide open to, to the community in there, and, you know, anybody who kind of walks through and that, like we, we have a closed campus and we keep a clear eye on that, but, you're out in the open and so, you know, anybody can kind of stroll through. At Lee, it isn't uncommon to see portable units tasked with heating or cooling an entire room. Cornwall told us that the HVAC systems in the building are so old, they can't find parts for them anymore. The freezing temperatures in the days leading up to filming were putting stress on the deteriorating systems. This room right here, we came in and it, there was a really strong smell of smoke and that, and so we, we went and checked it out. And again, it's just this cold weather these old systems trying to keep up with it, um, you know, but we had two classrooms that smelled <laughs> not the best. So we had to relocate one to another room for a while, you know, while we aired everything out and we brought the people in and they, you know, did their best to, to get them up and working the best they could to make kids comfortable, you know, because that's a big thing here at school is, you know, we have to provide them a safe, warm place to be because if you're not safe and warm, you don't do a lot of learning. Cornwell works with students who have sensory issues and his old classroom offered them a quiet space where they could go to decompress. His new room, which he was still moving into, was once a stage area. If you want to take a kid, you know, who is sensitive to noise and that doesn't work as well. We've got our uh, uh, gym over here and our music rooms next door. So any given day, you might have drums playing in here, you know, and music playing over there. And that's just kind of how it is. And we can do certain things, you know, with the lighting and that, you know, we usually turn that lighting on, turn the stage lighting on. We can, you know, decrease that, um, that uh, sensory input. We can, you know, in the other place, it was pretty quiet anyway, but we do have earphones and stuff that they can put on. The bilingual room was considered to go up here, but they have to be able to, you know, hear words and accents and, you know, with pronunciations and just with the different amounts of noise, it just wasn't going to be doable for them. Like they, they just, the kids couldn't hear in that. So we kind of bit the bullet and came up here and kind of let them use the other one just so, you know, they, they could have that room for academic time. Our tour of Kenroy with assistant principal Erin Coyle began in the kitchen where she explained that the school is now unable to cook meals on campus. Also just recently had the fire marshal require us to remove the stove because we lack a uh, exhaust vent for the, as a commercial kitchen. So um, we're no longer able to like warm up food or cook food. Um, our kitchen staff has to go down to another building and drive it up here. Uh, and they still manage to serve, like, how many meals a day, Selene? Well, right now we're at an average of about 330. 330 meals a day. When we did have our oven, though, what were we serving? About 100 more than that. About 100 more. So the fact that we're unable to, like, cook our food on site um, has really impacted our ability to get hot meals to kids. Same story for breakfast. Same story for breakfast. We do run breakfast after the bell here, so all kids um, are able to grab a hot meal and then they go to their classrooms and they sit down and get to eat. And how many breakfasts were we doing? That was like... Uh, we were close to 400 right now. We 400 a day? Close to 300. So we again dropped another 100. So the fact that we can't provide quality meals is... You can't learn when you're hungry. Outside, Coyle took us to where there is a fence of orange tape where a portable one stood. The portable, which was once used for intervention support, was damaged by a fire in April of last year. The floors of the breezeways are lined to help guide students, but the hallways are noticeably noisier due to the HVAC systems. I don't know why, but all of the vents, all of the HVAC vents, vent right out into the main breezeway. So it's incredibly loud. <laughs> 
when you're giving directions like to littles, like trying to walk. And they line the whole, um, I think they put them on the roof now, not, not in, the, in the hallway. Coyle wanted to demonstrate an exterior door for our camera, but she was unable to get into the classroom she was trying to unlock and told those inside to take another exit. The drill was called due to a burst pipe in another part of the building. A school official told NCW Life that it was just a fire suppression line that burst from the cold and caused no damage. Uh, this is Aaron. Hannah's door is right here. Yep, this is Aaron. Yes, we are having a fire drill right now. Okay. So. <laughs> okay, go out that door. Okay. I have to go handle the fire drill right now. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Dustin, you copy? When we were outside and you were trying to unlock the door, yeah. what was the situation there? Could you, you just couldn't access it or is it just never the accessible? Door, no, no, the door is usually, I don't know, the, it froze. It was, I, I don't know, the door for some reason wasn't opening, uh -huh. um, so she evacuated a different way. <laughs> but the kids were trying to get out that door for the fire truck. Oh yeah, for sure. That was really While Cascade, Kenner, and Lee would see complete modernization of their schools, Rock Island Elementary would see a smaller scope of improvements, including a new roof and HVAC system and safety upgrades like a single point of entry. We do only allow our parents and our students to enter through the main building, but when you first walk in, you can go two different directions in the hallway instead of direct line to the office. I think it's going to be extremely important for us to really lock that down so that when we let people into our building that they only can go to the office first before going into our building building because um, right now it's just a huge safety concern you yeah. don't want to expect the unexpected but you do you want to prepare for anything and right now you you can't um, there's just no they can come get buzzed in and then they can go any direction so for me that's a huge safety concern as a teacher and as a parent with kids in the school before safety measures required outside leading doors to remain shut during the school day Teachers at Rock Island would leave them open to get better air circulation. That was also sometimes how they would handle the odor of their drainage system. You can definitely smell that when you're going down the hall sometimes. Um, that's not a good smell. And it does fill the hallways, the classrooms, to the point where you're trying to close the doors. And um, again, you get you want to open your outside doors, but we don't. Our windows don't open. So if we could, in the newer side of the building, we have the windows that you can just slide open. But here, it would just be our doors, which comes back to that safety concern. The HVAC problems at the other schools named in the bond are caused by the age of the buildings. At Rock Island, their problems stem from a manufacturer error. There was a problem in the product design from the company, and now it's causing a lot of issues with our system. That's the reason why some, like my office, for instance, could be the coldest in the winter, hottest in the summer. But then you go to the classroom, same thing. Cold, you know, they're, you go to some of the new, even the newer classes or even the older ones, and they're just super cold sometimes in that morning. Summertime is hard because uh, when they come back from the summer and we, we're in that fall area, but it's still hot out, the sun is on, directly on that side of the building and what happens is is that that's the hottest part of the day and the teachers are getting all that heat. When the weather quality wasn't good outside and we were inside, we could still smell so much of that smoke inside and you could see a haze even just walking through the school. And so, I mean, that does a lot of it come back to our HVAC system and just not being able to filter that clean air. For the Especially kids. surrounded by orchards. I mean, there's so many coming down, unfortunately, but there is a lot of um, burning happening in the mm -hmm. fall and in the spring. Um, some of our classrooms, like I know there's a, over by the library, it, you, it really is enclosed, that smell is really strong and it brings up allergies and whatnot for those kiddos, especially the kiddos with asthma. This, it's in here. The mounting problems caused by the building conditions are not keeping Eastmont staff down. Each tour guide offered their praises for the district's maintenance staff 
who keep the buildings as in shape as they can. Scraped classrooms didn't get heat. They're still ha they're having issues with it. I know some of the bathrooms are completely frozen over. It feels like um, one of the bathrooms isn't getting the hot water. You know, so it's those kind of issues that even our maintenance department does a, an amazing job of getting out and helping us and servicing our uh, needs. However, you know, sometimes you know, if other schools are going through the exact same thing, especially those older schools, Cascade, Kenroy Lee. Um, it could cause a trickle down weight, you know, like they might beat us to the punchline. So they have to, we have to wait until they get their gets fixed and um, then we can get ours fixed. So, but our maintenance department, they, I feel bad because they do a lot of work trying to keep this place up to date um, and they're working hard around the clock. For the Eastmont teachers, there is still a lot to be proud of regardless of the building conditions. I have That's such pride point. in our school and you want the kids to have pride and ownership of it too and then you you know you come in you have parents that visit and I think it's just important too appearance wise and you have peeling tile and you have paint that hasn't been refreshed and um, just holes in the walls and uh, random pipes coming out of the ceiling and I'm sure they served a great purpose at one point in time but now that uh, we're here you know we want to be modern school and we want to be we want to have that same um, that, that buy-in for parents and yeah. you want to know like this is a good school and just because we have peeling tile on our floors doesn't mean we're not a great school and we are a really great school.